Hey everyone, we hope you are all doing well. Like I said yesterday, this week we are playing some more games. Most of my dancers know this one from class. We play this on occasion when it's a game week. I prefer to make sure that my dancers are practicing their technique. So freeze dance is not always a thing that we will play because I give plenty of times for free dancing and improv in other areas of class. So when we're playing game, I actually have a dice game where we will play with one or two dice and it is up to you with how hard you want to make the game. Two dice means you have a lot more steps you're going to have to accomplish, whereas just one, you only have to sometimes do things one time. So. If you're practicing ballet, you have you can write down each of your steps. Again, I have things basically following your syllabus. We know them as flashcards in the studio, but last night I asked you guys to write down what you remember, or if you're in our level program, write down the steps from your syllabus so you can make a dance out of them. We also have other options for like, if you're in pre-jazz hip hop, you can write down the steps you know from that. If you're in jazz or hip hop, write down those steps. What I want you to do then is find a song that matches. So if you're doing ballet, find a song that is applicable for ballet. If you're doing jazz, more of a jazz type song. If you're doing hip hop, make sure that it's themed appropriate. What you do then is Take all of those little vocab words that you wrote down, toss them in a hat or bunch them up or fold them, some way so you don't know what you're picking. And if you need to, have a dry erase board or something that you can write them down. You can also do this outside if you want to write with chalk and make it creative. If you really want to push it, you can try to do it entirely from memory. But I want you to play the song and get to know what the beat is. And in order to do the game, you're going to take one of your vocab words. So you pull a word out of the hat, just like you would have pulled a flashcard out in class, and you roll the dice. Whatever number is on the dice is how many times you do the step that's on your piece of paper. So if I roll a four and I pull the releve, that means I have four releves. So I will practice four releves to the song. Then I'll stop. I'll pull another term. Say I get glissade. I roll the dice again. This time I get six. That means now I have four releves and then six glissades. So you're going to build a dance. And I want you to try to make it so it applies to this song. So you still have to be working on your musicality and keeping count so you may have to change if you're moving slower or faster so that way it fits to the music. If you want to make it more challenging, you can take what you know from each step. So if you pull like a releve card, if you know that you can do other steps with a releve, practice them. If you have, if you roll a four, say you do a releve with your sur le coup de pied or with a passe and your ray t rays. Think of other ways that you use a releve and apply it that way as well. So you can make this game as complicated or as easy as you would like. For my pre-dancers or our younger dancers like the three to five year olds, we use more generic class cards. So our flashcards for them are more along the lines of just general motor skills like our passes. We think of walking like a flamingo. You can write down things like that. Can you walk? Can you practice your ballet walks? Are you able to skip yet? Can you hop on one foot? Things of that nature because that all sets us up for the stuff that we're going to be doing in dance. So, like I said, this game is kind of open-ended when you're doing this at home. You can make it as difficult or not and have fun with it and get creative. But now you guys can play whatever song you choose to do at home. I will see you tomorrow when I have another game. This one will actually be a new one for all of you. I will see you then.